Rejoice and be glad in it. We are a Christ-centered family of God's people, growing in faith, caring for each other, bringing others to Christ, and ministering to the needs of our changing community and world. Before I get to the scripture, I wanted to mention a little bit about my yesterday, because uh, I, I just has been on my mind. Uh, I mentioned recently about all of my wife's hummingbirds and her hummingbird feeders. Well, she had a wonderful idea. She thought the hummingbirds, they have these little openings in the feeders and that they get the nectar from, and why not make the openings wider? And so she made me drill the openings wider and then drill them again and drill them again to about 10 times the size so the hummingbirds could just, just splash around in the nectar. And they thought it was wonderful until the other day we uh, opened the sliding door and discovered that the reason the holes were so narrow was so, so that the uh, bees could not access the nectar. And so basically what we had done was made super bee um, feeders and uh, had uh, hundreds and hundreds of bees uh, by our, our um, sliding door. Now, we think bees are wonderful. They're very important. We need them out there pollinating and making honey and all the good things they do. Uh, but we prefer they not be by our sliding door. So. Um, you know, best of intentions, but there was a reason why the hummingbirds need to struggle for the nectar. It's because when we open it up, uh, uninvited guests uh, come, and it, we, we created an attractive nuisance uh, uh, for the bees. But yesterday was more like normal times for me in that I had two memorial services. Uh, because of the pandemic, there have been no memorial services in the sanctuary or at the uh, funeral home just down the road. My mind isn't working today. You'll know why in a minute. But uh, in the past, I, I, I do maybe a dozen services for the church family a year and many others for the community at large. Having been here 21 years, I've done services sometimes for a family two, three, or four times over the course of years. Uh, but yesterday I had two graveside services. 
This is something else that many cemeteries were not doing part of the time, but now some will allow small family gatherings with uh, masks and social distancing. But the first was at Riverside National Cemetery for a man who served our nation in the United States Marine Corps. And we give thanks for his service and, and uh, the freedoms we enjoy because uh, he stepped up to the call to keep us safe. And he also went on to be a truck driver and he, his side job was a plumber. He was a very good provider for his wife and four daughters. But he died at 67 after years of dementia and dialysis and other health challenges. His lovely wife was by his side through thick and thin. But why not more years? Only God knows. And then in the afternoon, I had a service by graveside in the shade of a tree for a young man of 41 who had a Down syndrome and also battled cancer and very much loved by his family. And why the cancer? Why death of 41? Why the Down syndrome? He was someone that everyone who knew, knew him, loved him deeply, touched their lives in a tremendous way, had a beautiful, beautiful 41 years of life. But why not more years? Only God can say. But the two services reminded me of more my normal life before the pandemic, because weddings, memorial services, visitations, that was more what I would do. I also visited somebody uh, briefly yesterday from the church family and, and um, had a wonderful time, but also learned of some of their challenges I was not aware of, which sometimes happens when we get together. But uh, that's not where the day ended. That was a full enough day for me, and along with the other tasks of the day, emails and phone calls and paperwork and what have you. But at midnight, our daughter had a great deal of pain, and uh, so we went to the emergency room. Uh, we were not able to go into the room with her, the hospital room, but we were grateful that they did allow people to stay in the uh, waiting room at this time. So. My wife and I did not wait in the car from midnight until five in the morning. Uh, I had a diversion. I left for a while at about 2.30 a.m. I got a message from our alarm company that somebody was um, trying to get into my church office through the window. I don't know why. Uh, so I drove to the church and uh, met one of our uh, police officers and he, I unlocked the gate. He went through the campus to make sure all was well. The person uh, decided not to go in my office after the alarm went off, and they did not stay around for us to greet them and have fellowship, or whatever the case may have been. Uh, hopefully they're moving on to better things and uh, learned a lesson, but I don't. that's between them and the Lord. But got back to the hospital, and we were thinking uh, appendix, but it ended up our daughter has her first, and hopefully only, kidney stone. And uh, so hope we prayers uh, to get through this uh, challenge quickly or to pass this challenge as the case may be. But um, we're glad it wasn't something else. We're grateful for the care that she received. And uh, she appreciated that we were 100 feet away in the, the waiting room, except for my little uh, field trip to the church in the middle of the night. So. Uh, we never know what each day is going to bring us or what's going to happen and how much time we have. And some things change. I was thinking years ago, our daughter's now 22, but when she was nine, uh, I had out my typewriter and she said, what's that? I explained to her when I was in junior high school, I learned to type on a manual typewriter. And then in, uh, in high school, I learned to type on an electric typewriter. It was much faster and more powerful. And so before her was my electric typewriter that I used all through college uh, to get my bachelor's degree. And she said, where's the monitor? I said, well, it doesn't have a monitor. Where's the printer? It doesn't have a printer. Where's the DVD drive? Well, it doesn't have one of those. Well, how does it work? The only thing she understood was it had a keyboard, and I said each key attached to we, uh, each button on the keyboard went with one of those uh, metal keys inside, 
that had a letter or number on it and you struck it, it rapidly and loudly stamped a ribbon and then it left an impression of a letter or a number on the paper. And I'd gotten it out to fill out a form. And when I explained it to her and allowed her to press a few of the keys, she laughed uncontrollably. And she said, Daddy, I've never heard of such a ridiculous thing. So some things have changed. Um, I think I'm probably not the only one here who remembers a typewriter. But uh, some things have changed, but other things have never changed. And one of those is the propensity of people to sin. The scripture for this morning comes from John chapter 16, verses 32 through 33. Just two verses, but two powerful verses in this day. The context, it's the very night, it's earlier on the night when Jesus was betrayed and arrested. Jesus says to us in John chapter 16, verses 32 through 33, reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Jesus says, The hour is coming. Indeed, it has come. When you will be scattered, each one to his own home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution. But take courage. I have conquered the world. May God bless this reading of Scripture. Jesus says the hour is coming. He means the hour of his suffering, the hour of his, his trial. And then he says not only is the hour coming, indeed it has come this very night. The disciples still don't understand. Jesus says, and you will be scattered. They're going to run away. Only one of them follows uh, along and is at the cross. Peter follows for a while, then denies knowing Christ three times and goes away. But they're scattered all directions. And uh, Jesus says, and you will leave me alone. It's a sad uh, statement because in Jesus' greatest hour of need, he was abandoned by those closest to him. But then Jesus says, yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. And that's part of our hope, that no matter how we feel and what we're going through, Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit is with us and within us. And so we're not alone. We're not abandoned. We're not forgotten. Jesus says, I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. Peace can mean different things. It can mean the absence of war. Jesus is talking not about an external peace in the world, but he's saying no matter what is going on around us, as the world is uh, succumbed with chaos and destruction and, and fighting and, and troubles, he's saying we can have an inner peace that passes all understanding, an assurance that we're, we're in God's care, that God's working in us and through us, and, and everything's going to work out on, on the end. So we can have an inner peace and confidence uh, to take us through whatever's happening. And then Jesus says some hard words. He says, in this world, you face persecution. That's not something we want to hear. We want to hear in this world, we're going to win the lottery. We're going to be promoted. We're going to be recognized. Uh, people are going to throw us a surprise party. Uh, we're going to be loved and appreciated. We don't want to hear, I want to let you know, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to face troubles. You're going to have problems. But that's what Jesus says. Now, he said some things change, like typewriters to computers. And some days I'm not sure if that's an improvement. It, it kind of depends. But, uh, but other things stay the same. And one thing that stays the same is the propensity of human beings to sin and to rebel. And that's why we have the evening news. Uh, the evening news, there's plenty to talk about. All the things going wrong in the world and all the problems and all the disagreements and uh, all the disappointments. 
People do the wrong thing. And in our world, we have, we have greed. We have, we have our temptations, our addictions. We have uh, our anger. We have our denial. We, we have our coveting things that are not ours. We sometimes fail to do the good that we could. And so there's a lot of corruption in this world. There's a lot of disappointment. And a lot of it is because of our choices or the choices of others. And that sadly has not changed. There, people are doing things all day long that they shouldn't or good that they could do, they fail to do. And so that's a reality of life, a world of, of war, disaster, poverty, immorality, and a disease, corruption, killing, and a, it's a difficult, challenging, dangerous world. So in this world, we have persecution, or other ways to put it would be trials, or tribulation, or danger. That's, that's the result of this world, and Jesus is honest about it. But he doesn't leave it there. He says, in the world you face persecution, but take courage. He says, take courage. And then Jesus says, I have conquered the world. I have conquered or overcome the world. And so the things that we're seeing around us that are disturbing, they've been conquered. They've been destroyed through Jesus Christ. This morning, Scripture says something beautiful about Jesus. Here he is on the road to the cross, and he's basically saying, friends, I already know you're going to abandon me. I know you're going to let me down. I know your propensity to sin, to fail, and some of you to even deny knowing me. Yet I love you anyway. And I promise you, I'm still going to be with you. And I will save you. And no matter what you face, I've already won the victory. And I still love you, and I still want you with me. Those are powerful words of grace. So Jesus lifts up the reality that in this world we'll face persecution, we'll face suffering, we'll face tribulation, we'll, we'll face sorrow and pain. But we can take courage because Jesus has already conquered the world. And we can cheer up because Jesus has already overcome the world. The world sometimes doesn't yet know it or recognize it, but Jesus has already won. Jesus has the last word, and the last word is forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. So we can rest in that assurance no matter what we're going through. The victory in Christ is already ours, whether it, uh, we experience it today or tomorrow or a few months from now or at the end of this life. So we can be of good cheer because Jesus has already overcome the world. That means we have a future hope, and it means it's the secret of having hope and trust and faith because we believe in Christ, who's already won against every evil, every temptation, and, and even Jesus has conquered death so that we can have new life on earth, the forgiveness of our sins, and eternal life in heaven. So in the scripture, I've lifted up that this life is not easy. We're facing a lot of things this day, and I... I keep mentioning Sunday after Sunday that the pandemic is still here. One of the joys of this uh, summer, one of the few, uh, other than being with my family more, is uh, getting away to go backpacking overnight a, a few times with uh, uh, my mind is going. I didn't get any sleep last night, as you now know, but Andy Yarbrough and Steve Goldseth and Tom Long and Dave Waters, uh, all from the church family, to go on some little just overnight backpacking trips. And there were wonderful experiences, but each time when we came down the mountain, I saw all the masks and realized the pandemic was still with us. Well, one of these days we're going to wake up and it's going to be gone, but I don't know how much longer or what's next or when we can open what and what's happening. And there's a lot of division on that and, and what people think we should do or not do. And these things just take time, but God will get us through it. And all the other challenges in our society now, and, and people are divided in so many ways, but God will get us through it. And the good news is we can take courage because Jesus has already won the victory over sin and death and destruction and 
in everything else. So as we put our trust in him and our hope in him, when we get knocked down, we just keep getting back up. I want to close with a story. It's a, it's a painful story, but it's also meaningful. It's a true story. And uh, it's a story of uh, Bishop Woody White, who was an African-American bishop in the Methodist Church and also a, a scholar. And uh, I, I believe he's still living. The story is from some years ago. But the story is one day he was uh, in his den and he was watching uh, football on television when the phone rang. And one of his relatives was, uh, was screaming hysterically into the phone. And when he finally could understand his, his relative, his relative said, Woody, Woody, come home quickly. Something terrible has happened. Your mother has been raped. His, uh, his mother was an elderly, poor, godly woman in, in New York, and he immediately rushed to the airport and then to a taxi and, and then climbed the five flights of stairs to his mother's apartment. And when he opened the door, he saw his elderly mother bending over the uh, stove and, and the frying pan, cooking some chicken. And as he was holding her and crying, she said, Woody, I'm frying chicken. I thought you might be hungry. And he just was overcome with all the emotion and, and wailing and crying and thinking of, of how such a horrible thing how somebody could do such a horrible, horrible thing to his sweet, elderly, godly, saintly mother. And he was overcome by her simple concern for him uh, that he just broke down and wept uncontrollably. And as he was weeping on his mother's shoulder, she reached down and lifted his chin like she would have done when he was crying and five years of age. She looked him square in the eye and she said, Woody, I want to tell you something. I don't want you to ever forget it. God is still good. God is good. God is good. And that is hope. It's hope's answer to the, all that's happening in the world and on the news and, and the kind of hope that will win out over all that we see happening around us. This world has its problems. I mean, to, to light. This world is a disaster and it's filled with pain and horror and, and suffering. And, and there's a lot that we can point to. But this world is not without hope because Jesus came out of love. He suffered all the world through at him. And on the third day, he rose again. Death couldn't hold him, and, and he came to forgive us and to love us and to teach us to do the same. And Jesus told the disciples, I already know you're going to abandon me, but I'm not alone. God is with me, and God's Spirit is with us when we turn to the Lord. And he says to us, you're going to face persecution and trials and suffering and pain. But be of good courage. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. Cheer up. I've conquered the world. I've overcome the world. Jesus is saying, whatever the world throws at us now, it'll pass. We already know the end. The end of the book, as I said last Sunday from Billy Graham, the end is great. It's going to be okay. And there are glimmers of hope. I'm going to close. I, I should have brought it with me. Someone sent me a, a thank you card for something that I had done. And their wording, it said basically that I was a, a ray of sunshine in their sorrow. And I rather like that idea. I want to show it to my wife when she uh, lists uh, some of my areas where I need to grow. Um, but I was a ray of sunshine in their sorrow. But we have that opportunity. There, there's sorrow all around us, but we can be a ray of sunshine. When we share the love of God and remind people that God is still good, God's getting us through all this, there's a great life in heaven, but there's some wonderful days on this earth. Even in the bad days, we can share love and light we can give thanks for our blessings. 
Thanks for our salvation. Thanks for our forgiveness when we've made mistakes or done wrong things. There's a lot to be grateful for and thankful for. And we can be some sunshine in other people's darkness to let them know there's hope and there's good things and good people. So God is still good. We're going to face suffering. That's part of life. But it makes us stronger, shows us what we can take, and it gives us a chance to bear witness to our faith and the good news that Jesus has overcome the world and he's going to carry us to salvation and eternity and he's going to use us mightily on this earth to share his light and his love and make a difference. Amen.